Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. I am Chandra Reddy, VP of Product Marketing at Active View. Here you go. Um, it's been uh, three years uh, here at Active View. Prior, I started my career at Computer Associates as a software engineer. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Back then it was good. Um, so Unicenter TNG, that was the first product that I worked on. And then I moved on to uh, Oxo Backup Product for almost 10 years. Uh, left CA and then was at uh, for three and a half years uh, at SunGuard, um, Backup and Disaster Recovery Services. I was fortunate enough to launch multiple services there. And then, um, you know, uh, I joined Actifio approximately three years ago. That's my brief introduction. Right. <clears throat> Uh, I'll echo what Chandra said. Thank you, everybody, for making the trip to come see us. I'm Brylon Achilles, VP of Global Solution Architecture here at Actifio. I'll be showing you more of the demos uh, side of things this afternoon. Uh, my background is I've worked for multiple different uh, emerging uh, technology companies, startups, if you will, in the data and storage space, including uh, starting at Storage Networks uh, way back a uh, long, long, long time ago with Stephen, uh, working for a uh, storage resource management company uh, with Ash at uh, FIQ, working for an object storage company called Archivus uh, in the VDI space uh, with Atlantis Computing. And I've been here at Adikifio for just about uh, six years, changing the way that customers manage data. And we'll get right into it here in short order and show you guys exactly what we mean. Awesome, thank you. So <clears throat> what I'll do is I will walk through some of the high level architecture, the next level of details um, from what Ash um, uh, explained. So typically, you know, um, customers have primary data center and a disaster recovery data center. Yep. You have production applications. Now, you need to protect the data. You need to back up in, you know, the data. So what happens is um, cost, a lot of customers struggle because of the fact that they have full backups. They still have to do once a week full backup and then incrementals, right? Especially for large databases, people still have not cracked the code to do it incremental forever. So what ActiveView does different is do it incrementally forever, not only just for VMware virtual machines, but for everything. You have a NAS filer with 50 million files on it, we'll do incremental forever. You have a 50 terabyte Oracle database or a 10 terabyte SQL database, we'll do incremental forever. And not only that, we will also do with, with flexibility that there are some customers who have a religion of leveraging fiber channel, or some customers who are flexible enough to do it fiber channel or IP. And we give the option to pull the data, ingest the data over fiber channel or IP into Actifio software, right? So the first big thing for customers is incremental forever for all, for all data. And we ingest the data at a block level for the most part, for file level, for some situations like NAS filers, right? Once we get the data, what we do is, the second aspect is that we store the data in its native pristine block format. And the reason why we do that is so that we can enable this data to be leveraged for multiple use cases. Your 10 terabyte SQL database goes down, it can, be, it can be up and running within three minutes. And we're gonna do some of the demonstrations today. Right? So the, our ability to uh, store the data in its native pristine state uh, allows us to bring up applications very, very quickly. And they, they could come up for multiple use cases. It could be a planned outage, it could be an unplanned outage, or it could be a dev and test day. Somebody wants 10 copies, or it could be pre-production UAT, or it could be production support, who wants to do root cause analysis on a copy of production database. So this is where the magic happens. We store the data on any storage that you provision behind Actifio, and what we, here what we are calling it as snapshot pool. This is where Actifio stores the data in a block level format, in its native format. Now this is great for you know, instant recoveries, instant access. This kind of eliminates those storage snapshot licenses that somebody is paying on the production storage. Now all of that can be done on a secondary storage behind Actifio, right? The next thing that comes up is people want to store data, for retain data for, for some period of time. It could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So what we also do is that, okay, we figured that, okay, the best way to store data for many days or weeks or months or years is to dedupe the data. So we dedupe the data and store it in what we call as a dedupe pool, right? And uh, this is where you could store the data for 30 days, 60 days, whatever retention you want. And now, this is great, you got instant recovery, you got some retention on the primary side, but, but what if the primary side goes down? You gotta have the data on the DR side. So then, after we globally deduplicate the data, we replicate the data to the second side, right? So your DR side could be cloud, could be MSP's uh, service provider side, or could be customer's own DR side. And there they can again store the data in deduplicated format for whatever retention they want. Now, most products 
backup products especially, their story stops here. They leave the data, replicate, and the story is over. What we wanted to do was obviously something different and something efficient. We wanted to offer an re instant recovery and a scalable recovery, right? You can probably spin up a virtual machine on a DDU pool storage, but it's not going to be scalable. You can't do real I.O. on it. If you have 1,000 virtual machines, you're not going to bring up 1,000 virtual machines on a deduplicated storage, right? So what we thought was, how can we efficiently offer recoveries at the DR side? So what we figured was, since we are incremental forever in nature, we know exactly what blocks are changing on the left-hand side. So what we could do is, we can, take, we can also keep track of those blocks and incrementally rehydrate the data on the DR side in the snapshot pool, right? So if it's a 10 terabyte database, 500 gig changed, we capture only 500 gig, Maybe we dedupe it down to 200 gig. 200 gig travels the wire, comes to the right-hand side, gets stored in the dedupe pool, and then we inflate the 200 gig to 500 gig and put it into the snapshot pool. Now you have the data back in its pristine state, which you can leverage for uh, instant recoveries. Now, so we got the data to this side. What we also wanted to solve, so low RTO problem, solved. Now we also wanted to solve the low RPO problem, right? So people don't want necessarily data to be protected every 24 hours. They, so, you know, they tier their applications, and for some tier zero applications, they want one hour RPOs or 30 minute RPOs. We do that as well. With one hour RPOs, we can move the data from this snapshot pool to that snapshot pool directly. Right? So you can get the flexibility of one hour to 24 hour RPOs with the product. So low RTO, low RPO solved. Now, uh, let's talk about low RTO. Just because the data is available on the DR side doesn't mean much. You've got to marry this data with compute. Right? So what we did was, imagine somebody having 1,000 virtual machines. Where do you just get started? Right? I, mean, you know, I have talked to many people who maintain their DR plans in a spreadsheet. Right? So what we did was we built a nice web interface for our customers. They can leverage a tool called ActiFio Resiliency Director. And what it allows people to do is create DR plans and save them and a one-click push button disaster recovery to bring up 1,000 virtual machines. Completely orchestrated, unattended, there's no human operations involved. So, so that's a real disaster recovery where the entire application set comes up automatically. And we'll talk more about that and we have demonstrations as well for that. Now the last piece that is missing, the three R's of resiliency are RTO, RPO, and retention. So if you have multi-year retention, 20 years retention, and you want to completely eliminate tapes, what we also have done is you can take the data and push it into the object storage, cloud object storage, on-premise object storage, and store the data for the next whatever number of years. Right? Um, now, most importantly, all of this functionality is SLA driven. So you create SLA slash policies at a central location uh, in our um, web interface, centralized user interface called ActiveView Global Manager, and then you can distribute workloads um, uh, automatically onto multiple active view appliances. You can manage all the active view appliances, software and physical appliances from a uh, central location. Um, and you set the SLAs and you tier your app servers and you put those tiered servers into the right SLAs and active view takes care of all of this. So let me pause and see if you have any questions, comments on the architecture so far. Do you see any concern that customers have that although you're creating uh, local snapshots, remote snapshots, uh, you are calling it backup, yet it's all within the same system. And some customers would like to have, they actually liked having that separation to tape or to another technology. So if something goes wrong with Activio or they don't like Activio anymore, they, their data is still around and, and available. Yeah, this storage, this snap pool and DDU pool that Activio has created, this could be on any storage, and that any storage is typically different from the production storage. We would never put any of this stuff on production storage. Can you, because you were talking about it all being inline in its native format, can you use that data without Actifio, for example, or does it have to be rehydrated or, or reconnected via Actifio? It is native, but yeah. it's not inline? Correct, yeah, so it, it's absolutely native format, it's not inline. Um, we store the data in native format on, on this purpose-built appliance for the copies. We also store it in native format here. So we actually have a utility where you can directly take these images out of object storage with no you know, Actifio solution required to recon reconstruct the blocks to these images that we're, that we're putting in the object storage so that you can use that data without Actifio. Okay, so I mean, I'm playing a bit of devil's advocate, but it is if someone deploys your solution and decides to change it or, or something else, they, they can uh, pull their information out Absolutely, very easily. And the beauty of what we do, and we'll show you in the demo, all of this is native format. So if you don't want to use Actifio anymore, 
spin up the data and move it off. It's, it's very easy to do. It's not a, nothing is stored in a proprietary format. Okay, and then you, have, you can still have your, your backup data on separate physical medium, which is, a, which is more protection than just a, a local snapshot. Absolutely right. You'd have your production environment, you know, back to Ash's diagram, you'd have production on your production resources. Actifio is the copy resources. So we are 100% completely separate from production, no dependencies whatsoever. You can use different vendors, storage, if you like, completely different firmwares, all that good stuff, to give yourself true redundancy, including multiple copies, multi-hop, and even leveraging the public cloud. Yeah, like. I've actually got the converse question, Julian. It's if my production storage is modern metadata-based storage, why don't I just create snapshots for my dev? Because you know, and rather than move it to then ha rather than have to provision for you guys the snapshot pool to be fast enough to run my dev. Yeah, if we can hold that one for we have a demo that's going to address directly that. I'll walk you through. Um, I'm good. I got all sorts of how questions I'm holding. All right, perfect. <laughs> all right. Um, but the, the situation that you brought up, Julian, that never happens, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the real. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was for resiliency, you know, backup and disaster recovery. Of course, Actifio is also used for test data management, DevOps, uh, accelerate application release cycles um, for our large enterprise customers. So this is a um, high-level overview of how that works. So you have production data, right? And as you just saw, we create a golden copy in the snap pool, and we do it incremental forever. And what we also do is that operations don't want to give copies of production to dev and QA engineers as is. They will always want to obfuscate or mask certain sensitive data, right? So we automatically mask the sensitive data. And once the data is masked, what we do is if there are, let's say you all are uh, have your own test environment and 15 people want 15 copies of production, all of you get self-service instant access to copies of production, irrespective of the size of production. And you can also change the data. So yes, it's a rewritable. Hospital numbers, for example, I could make the, the five different copies and then mask out the hospital numbers. Absolutely. And you can get, most important thing is that it's integrated into um, databases, which means it's not just that the data storage comes up on your machines, on your test machines, but it's tightly integrated with SQL and Oracle, for example. And so you basically literally see an entire five terabyte database online in your test machine instantaneously, right? It's like Netflix. You log in, you select a movie, and you start streaming the movie. That's exactly the experience that we will offer. Right, right? So, I, so I log into your console and I say, bring up a copy of Company 7's ERP database. That's right. And that, bring, that creates the appropriate instance in a database server that I've pre-specified. Right. Exactly okay. right. Well, you're showing you just that chill. in about five minutes. What's that? Actifio and chill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, that's a lot of convenience for dev and QA, right? So self-service, virtual databases, well, and it also refreshes. To, it means I don't have to call the DBA, and I hate those. You don't have to call the DBA. That, that's it. Self-service, exactly. automation are the two keys, but we'll, we'll walk you through it. So you want a 10 terabyte database on your machine. You don't have to call a storage admin. You don't have to call a DBA, right? So... You know, Actifio will deliver that virtual database on your machine. Or a sysadmin or a backup admin. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all this uh, convenience does not come at the cost of security and control. IT operations absolutely can specify role-based access control, that Bryland can get access to all databases, but Chandra <laughs> should get access to only the SQL database on this test machine, so they can draw fences around who gets control. Right? So, and of course, they have the flexibility to leverage multiple hypervisors. And this kind of partially answers your question, Howard, that the way Actifio does is different. It decouples data from underlying storage and infrastructures. Your production could be from one vendor, but if you want test and dev activities to happen on a vendor two or a vendor three storage, or maybe even vendor two storage for high performance testing and vendor three storage for uh, cheap and deep storage for functionality testing, or Maybe take the data and put it on Amazon, for example, and do all the test dev there. So that's the um, you know, freedom that we offer with our software so that test and dev can happen anywhere. Does your software handle the, the data integrity of that? Because, for example, if you're using any kind of external array, you then paying EMC, NetApp, Dell to do replication of the data in their software. Can't, are you just using the disk pretty much as dumb disk? It obviously has to have the performance characteristics to support. You're using the disk as dumb disk, as I showed in the previous slide. We will do all the replication, and we will completely save you the replication and snapshot licenses. And we'll do it application consistently as well.
Any other questions before I move on to the next slide? So while working with uh, hundreds and hundreds of customers and thousands of customers in both these use cases, here is uh, typically the re requirements that we have seen from customers. Like for backup and disaster recovery point of view, they want to manage <coughs> large data sets. Lots of en these enterprise customers have multi-terabyte databases. They want instant recovery, very efficient backups and disaster recoveries for them. And they want to deal with physical servers, virtual machines, databases, NAS filers, even the virtual machines in Amazon Cloud, as an example, with a single pane of glass, one platform. They don't want multiple point tools, one for VMs and one for physicals and so on. Um, they want incremental forever. They want the flexibility for RTO with one product. They don't want to buy a backup product and then go buy a host-based replication product because they want low RTO, right? Uh, flexible RPO, they want the dial, RPO dial, all the way from one hour to 24 hours. They will tier their applications and pick the, whatever RPO they want. And of course, they want retention. Different applications, different tiers will have different retention needs, and they want the flexibility. Single pane of glass, SLA-driven, and of course, hybrid cloud. Some applications on-premises and some applications in public cloud. And, and for RPO, less than an hour... <coughs> But you're just you're just not trying to address that. This is out of the box. In some situations, we might you know we might also claim that 15 minute RPO is good with us. However, a 15 minute RPO. There's, there are very few people where an hour to 15 minutes matters. Yeah. It's you know I need one minute or I need you know essentially zero. Exactly. So for those, you know, you can leverage dark fiber and use something else. Yeah. So the, ne the next uh, use case was test data management for DevOps. And typically, this is, again, about large data sets. The real pain point is when you have large data sets, databases, volumes, NAS filers, creating multiple virtual copies is tough. Um, they want instant virtual copies. They want self-service. You know, Developers want uh, to get the copies instantly. They don't want to, especially in a global development team when people are in different time zones, um, they want self-service. Storage independence is huge. Primary could be on one storage, but all the test and dev could happen on another storage. They want data masking that is completely automated. And um, they want bookmarks and rewind, just like a DVR. They might want to go to a certain point in time for a specific virtual database, do their testing, do their destructive testing, and then go back. So that's um, a bookmarks and rewind. And of course, they want to do hybrid cloud, test in some other hypervisor or cloud. 